No, no, no. He has been better. I don't know. Yeah. 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 All right, let me have your attention. Those of you standing, let me ask you to quickly find a seat. And let me tell you how delighted I am. I'm Enid Wiseman, I'm the mayor of our fabulous city of Aventura, and we're delighted to host this town hall meeting today. Because our Senator Jennifer Bradley has to leave early, Representative Danny Perez has to leave early. We're going to change a little bit of what was originally scheduled for the meeting. I want to at least recognize my fellow commissioners, Denise Lamman and Rachel Salzman Friedland. And hold your applause, because really time is of the essence. This is such an important topic for all of us that I don't want to waste it. Commissioner Billy Joel. Um, and next time you sit with the commissioners, Mr. Joel, please. I also want to recognize the people that allowed this to happen. The Elaine Adler, the Marketing Council, my city manager, Ron Wasson. Uh, and with that, I am going to give this to Gary for one 30-second introduction, and then we will go on to the program, and then to Joe. Yes, Mayor. So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Gary Pyatt. First of all, thank you for coming out to the program today. Um, I am the chairman of the board for the Chamber of Commerce for Aventura, so along with myself also wearing a hat as a VP and partner of Campbell Property Management, we are partnering today this program with uh, Joe First from Hotwire Communications. Just really quick, Campbell Property Management, oldest owner-operated property management company in the state of Florida since 1953. So outside of this, I live this every single day, what we're talking about today. So for us, this was extremely, extremely key to have the four senators here today. We've already had multiple conversations on the complexities of this bill and things like that. So if I can do anything for you or help you at all, please do not hesitate. Give me a call, come up to me after the program. You didn't, it, they were, okay, I'll do it, that's fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're doing this on the fly because of time and we know, give it to Joe. Yep. <laughs> and we know how important it was. You don't wanna hear from me, you wanna hear from them. So we're so kind of going on the fly and I hope everybody understands. Yes, our, our, our wonderful mayor is correct. We had a wonderful introduction for all four of our legislators here. We want to make sure that they have the time to speak. But before they do, my name is Joe First, as Gary said. I'm Senior Vice President and General Manager of Hotwire Communications. I also sit next to Gary on the Aventura Marketing Council. Hotwire Communications, we've been in business for 20 years. We're, we started here in South Florida. We specialize in homeowners associations and condo associations, providing internet, video, phone services, and making sure that when you need someone, they answer the phone. And we're the premier provider and largest fiber optic provider in the United States. Thank you for having us, and you certainly want to hear from them. So thanks for coming. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Gary. Okay. We have with us here today, and I'll go from the end, Senator Jennifer Bradley. We have Senator, hold the applause, Senator Jason Pizzo, Senator Lauren Brooke, Book, and Representative Daniel Perez. Now, Lauren and Jason are part of our family. They've been with us forever. But as I said earlier, Jennifer, you and Danny are now part of the Aventura family as well. A lot happened in session. If you have any questions, it's important that you write them down and please get them to Kayla. So wait, wait yeah, raise your hand. Okay. Um, now trying to find how you get back on a program that you're not even doing. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank each and every one of you for the incredible work that you did during special session, especially during the special session. I think everyone felt that there was no hope of anything being passed. Thank you. 
Thank you, Danny. We did get something done. And with that, I think that we know that Danny Perez really worked hard and he has a great deal of information on the integrity of the reserve studies and we're all thinking about that and very concerned with that. So Danny, I'm gonna hand you the microphone and then we'll go if you, unless, do you each wanna make a, like a one minute statement first or just straight to questions? So folks, they had nice long, pretty introductions about our background, our bios, who we are and all that stuff. We've decided to skip that just so we can get to content and I don't think you guys are gonna object. So we can jump right into it and start having a conversation. Please. He's got a mic. Oh. Awesome. Well, thank you, Mayor, and it's uh, nice to meet everyone. Uh, this is definitely a, a new place for me. I don't, I don't trek over to Aventura much. I'm, I'm a Miami guy, so I'm, I'm usually uh, in the south part of Miami. I, I don't make it up here, but I hope to, to come back more often. Uh, so just to talk about the reserves a little bit, uh, one, this, this issue of uh, condominium reform or condominium association reform is, is an issue that has been around Tallahassee for many years. I've been here for five years, and every year there, there is a bill that has to do with condominium associations or really just associations in general. Uh, during session, we, we had kind of set out a goal, the four of us and our colleagues, in a bipartisan manner, to have some sort of reform that we would be able to, to accomplish by the end of session. Uh, and, and we weren't quite there yet. Um, but during the, the off season, those conversations continued and during special session, we were able to pass a bill that I think is, is that exactly what this state needed when we're talking about condominium associations and, and really just condominiums in general. But, but what I wanted to talk to in, in, in more detail, and each of them can chime in on, on other parts of the bill, but, but really the most important part of the bill, in my opinion, which is one that I wanted to talk to you guys about, uh, has to do a, of a conjunction between the reserve study uh, and the actual reserves that are being collected for uh, the structural integrity components of a condominium. As we all know, reserves exist, they will always exist, and, and there's a maintenance part of a condominium that falls within the hands of the board in conjunction with whatever company it is that they are working with, whether it's Gary's or another one's, to make sure that, that the building is up to par. But there's a difference between the flower bed by the front gate and the structural components that, that, that make sure that the building is, is safe. Uh, what we have been able to do in this bill is make sure that a reserve study is completed every 10 years. A reserve study is gonna be done by a specialist, a reserve study specialist, an engineer, an architect. It's a, a, a professionals, professionals that will be able to, to sit with a board, for example, and say, hey, this is what it's gonna cost over the next 10 years, five years, 20 years, whatever it may be, in order for you to make sure that when it's time to replace the roof of this building, that the money is there for the replacement of the roof. And these specialists will take into consideration the inflation, the cost, the labor of what that, it, what that projection may be over, over the time of use of that roof. That reserve study will get coupled uh, with the actual funds that are being collected by that association. And, and, and we understand that some associations are collecting funds and some aren't. But, but after this bill was signed, it is now mandatory. Um, and the reason we made it mandatory is because we, we don't believe that uh, there is any dollar amount that should get in the way of, of safety. And, and that uh, is something that's important to all of us. So I'll let everyone else get into, into their little tidbit, but uh, really what I wanted to, to get into more than anything was the importance of the reserve study in conjunction with the requirement of reserve funds for structural integrity components of a condominium. Well, thank you very much. And actually, I'm going to talk about, if I can, about the three other people that are here today. And that's Representative Perez, Senator Pizzo, and Senator Bradley. Uh, I, like many of you, saw the horrific tragedy that happened um, in Surfside. We're almost at the one-year anniversary. Um, and trying to support a colleague of mine who does represent Surfside came down and said, what can I do? How can I do it? And how fast can we make anything happen? Uh, you have in front of you two members of the legislature who fought harder and was more present than any public servants I have ever seen before. I don't know that Senator Pizzo ever left. I don't know that his staff ever left. Um, that was before I inherited and have Maggie all to myself. Um, but there wasn't a firefighter who needed a bottle of water or a, a bar mitzvah photo, quite frankly, on the floor that wasn't picked up by Senator Pizzo um, or by Representative Perez. You have in front of you two people who care about this community and wanted to do anything and everything that they could 
to make sure that something like this never, ever happened in this community again. And you have Senator Bradley, who was given the Herculean task of working alongside two very strong individuals, one being <laughs> Senator Pizzo as well, um, who lives, eats, breathes um, this issue and this topic. And Senator Bradley did so with grace, determination, knows this subject matter better than anybody. And I, for one, was happy, proud, and thankful to be able to simply help um, get everybody into a room during the special session to work to make this happen. Is it a perfect product? Is it a completed product? It's not a perfect product, and we're going to continue to work on this um, because we've gotten to this place in this space uh, after a lot of time and some decisions that have been made and some indecisions that have been made in the very strange and different world that is condos, right? It's a little different. Uh, my mom lives in one and I've learned a lot from that. Um, but I will say that here today you have three public servants that fought tooth and nail to help make this happen for your community. And I, for one, am just happy and thankful to be able to be a small part of helping to make that happen. Okay, so uh, just for those that are on Zoom, we have a number of people on Zoom. We just want everyone to be made aware. Uh, we, this is not a part-time gig for us, even though it's supposed to be by statute. So we do this full-time. This is, this is really our, our life and our jobs. Everything that's mentioned on Zoom in the chat, questions that are asked are all going to be received. Every single thing, every comment and every question, respectfully, is going to be considered uh, for any future iterations, permutations, changes, tweaks, or considerations. We are mindful that there is not a perfect solution to this whatsoever. But I'm going to reiterate what Representative Perez said. It's going to be unpopular. It's going to be sticky. It's going to seem like tough love. It may be, in some parts, very expensive. But so is smoking for 40 years or eating like I do, all the carbo loading that I'm doing. And I don't get the commensurate exercise to, for your doctor to tell you that you went too long and you, and you went too hard uh, without making the appropriate steps. I have long said, and this is not a mystery to any of you, that I have filed condo bills in the past. Uh, where a lot of associations have artificially suppressed their association fees to remain popular and get reelected. They do so at the expense of the fiduciary obligation that they're violating as well as life safety issues. But we have a number of other issues that have, that have arisen over the years like fire sprinkler systems. And when that comes up each and every single year. Here's the approach that I take with it and we, we do the same with the same contemplation and the same sort of sensitivity. Every year, perennially, it came up uh, that it was basically vendor driven, but to install fire sprinkler, wet sprinkler systems in buildings that didn't have them, to retrofit them. Now that came at a huge expense in the Miami Beach, Bell Harbor, Surfside area, that would have been anywhere from ten to $16,000 per unit. The senator who was carrying the bill said to me, not in a flippant way, but you know, rather matter of factly, certainly Senator Pizzo, you're brand new to the legislature, you don't want to vote against a bill, and a grandma in your district might die in a fire inside of a condo. I said, no, I don't, but I certainly don't, also don't want to be the senator that votes for a bill for the retroactive application and special assessment that likely displaces 12,000 of those same grandmothers. And that's the balancing act. So what I proposed to do when that bill came up was the following, and I've said this since, since the, the, the day that the building collapsed in Surfside, that things need to be priced accordingly. Risk needs to be priced accordingly. And I believe in the marketplace to do a lot of those things, competition and professionalism. But here is my position as it related to the fire sprinkler system. It's perfectly analogous to what we're dealing with here. I said, surely the underwriters are going to recognize the mitigation of property loss, injury, and death by installing these sprinkler systems. And there should be a reduction in the premium, the policy amount, because you're installing something that's certainly so critical and so life safety. So we shopped it out to three underwriters actually four underwriters, three came back and said it's a de minimis change. The fourth actually said, well, now that you have a couple million gallons of standing water, that's actually, that's actually a higher risk. That's an enhanced risk because it can cause property damage. So I discovered that it was sort of vendor driven. It wasn't that the actuaries at these companies were able to mitigate life safety and risk issues and property issues. That's the same sort of situation that, that we're in here now. I know it sounds awful, but I hear from many of you, 64% of my district of 546,000 people right now in the 15 cities that I represent have all called to tell me that their association fee went from X to X plus. But then when I ask almost everybody, what has your association fee been for the last year, two years, three years, four years, five years, six years, seven years, it's been the same. Now the price of bread, milk, gas, airline tickets, and hotel rooms have all gone up. Some exacerbated by inflation, some just because the cost of labor and materials is greater. If your association fee is not principally and substantively changed in the last 10 years, it was done and suppressed artificially. That's the bottom line. That's simple economics. And I apologize in advance, but I don't apologize for being concerned about your safety and your family's safety. 
We don't want to displace anybody. The intent is not to make anybody, you know, bankrupt, displaced, have to sell, be in distress, any of those situations. So in the background, while you, well, we hand you a two-dimensional piece of paper and it looks like we're doing this from 38,000 feet and have no consideration for your life, I will tell you that I am the one senator in the Florida Senate who lives in a condo with his wife and kids. I live this. My very close and dear friend, Mayor Wiseman, lives in a condo with her husband, Stephen. We live this every, each and every single day. The intent is not to displace anybody, to hurt anybody, to attack any individual, entity, group, business, or, any, or trade, or anything. In fact, it's to enhance it and to show and demonstrate in the most bipartisan fashion, I will tell you, in recent memory, anywhere in the country, that we ecumenically and collectively agree to be concerned about your safety and the viability of neighborhoods and communities. That's it. And you have our commitment to get to that place without causing any kind of distress, disruption, disruption or disturbance in your life. Senator Bradley. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. And uh, this is clearly a tremendous team. And we have spent a, a, an incredible amount of time trying to find the product that will address uh, the issues that were so so plainly brought to light um, in Surfside here almost a year ago. Um, I, unlike Senator Pizzo, I represent rural North Florida. I do not have a lot of condos in my district. But what I do is chair community affairs in the Florida Senate, which is a committee that deals with relationships between local governments and the state, building codes, and all of these issues. So immediately after the tragedy, task force were set up and stood up across the state, and the state was given uh, we, we had the benefit of all of their work um, and from around the state to guide us, and we took that very seriously. Um, and ultimately, this bill reflects three main areas that were uh, that needed to be addressed. First is inspections. Some counties in the state have inspections. Those inspections need to take place statewide so that every aging building in the state of Florida has a, has a professional going in to make sure that it is safe for its intended use, which is for families to live. Uh, second, we needed transparency and disclosure. It was clear that unit owners are really in the dark. They don't know. There's no requirement uh, to have an inspection. There's no requirement to inform unit owners if an inspection is done and the building is in poor uh, structural shape. That clearly needed to change. So this bill uh, makes those records part of the official records of the condo. It requires that unit owners are aware of both the, the structural condition of their condo as well as the financial health of their, of their association. And lastly uh, is the financial health piece of these associations um, and making sure that, that they are properly planning. Uh, condos that do regular reserve studies, they have far fewer special assessments. And that's because they're properly planning. And there's a lot of condos in the state that are doing that. Uh, but far too many aren't. And I think you'll see that, that condos that are in poor financial shape are the ones who, who will soon have uh, structural issues because there's been maintenance deferred and, and that creates the safety issues that, um, that are simply unacceptable. And as Senator Pizzo said, we, we, there's no intent to, to raise the cost, uh, but, but we have to have a bit more alignment between the true cost of ownership of living in these buildings. Um, and and we, we have a timeline. I consider this to be um, a, an incredibly sweeping reform of condos that we haven't seen in a couple decades, um, but it is the start where there is more work to be done as we kind of have that alignment uh, take place and, and try to have it with as, as least, least uh, financial discomfort to, uh, to the residents of, uh, that, that live in condos. So that was, our, that was our goal, that was our intent, and uh, I think it's a good product. So let's run into some questions. Uh, what we did not have the benefit of, and I, I don't think Representative uh, Perez is going to disagree from the House side, certainly I don't, we're not from the Senate side. Whenever a bill is proposed and it's in a committee and then goes through a committee process, and go, it gets a bill analysis by the staff of each of those committees that it receives. Because this was an extraordinary circumstance between the Senate and the House to actually get this passed, it did not receive a full bill analysis of the, of the finished product. And I think we could probably ask staff over the summer to go ahead and, and work on that, which does give a more of a, a plain sort of reading. Let me jump into questions. Uh, one submitted here in person. The engineer's report after the inspection of the material findings, should it be submitted to local government, condo association website, or placed in a conspicuous place? Who wants to take it? Good. Once the, uh, once the inspection report is done, there'll be not only the full report, but a summary. Um, and that will be given to the local building official sealed 
uh, and it will also be given to the association who is then charged with giving it by email or regular mail to all the unit owners. And if the condo is, is required to have a website where it keeps its official documents, I think it's 150 non-timeshare units or something like that, then, uh, then those documents will be on the website as well. Okay, so the follow-up question was, does the report need to be distributed to each owner? This will require either by regular mail or email. Or email that each individual unit owner is made, is apprised and given uh, a summary of this report and yeah, I, need I, to be able to get the, the entire thing, correct? And I think there was a question about could it be by personal delivery, and I would suggest that it needs to be by mail uh, or by email. Okay. Um, Senator, let me, let me add to that. There's, there's one part that, that I wanted to add to that that I think is important. When, when there is a purchase of a condominium happening, happening uh, sometimes the purchaser is left out in the dark about what either the reserves looks like, what requirements uh, will be needed in the future, or even what those inspections look like. Maybe those requirements aren't there yet. Maybe they're in the process of doing a reserve study. But within our bill, the four of us were, were adamant um, that in a real estate transaction of a condominium that the purchaser uh, has the right to see those documents, to understand what the association looks like, the build out, the, 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 the reserves specific to, to this bill at least. Um, and so that was something that, that I wanted to make sure that, that you all know so we can protect uh, some, you know, some, some hiding of the ball. Not that it was happening, but just in case anyone's thinking about it, it, it won't happen anymore. To Representative's uh, point, there, we're required to disclose about lead-based paint even though the majority of this room lives in a building that, that lead-based paint wasn't around. Okay, that's still required. That's a little antiquated. I think something like this is obviously more relevant um, and, should, and should be part of perhaps a uniform disclosure statewide going forward. That's something that we would absolutely consider. And for renters as well. I don't yes. know if Danny said that. Uh, next question. What could be done to ensure that board of directors, uh, I think it says commitments uh, to meet regularly. This is taken from uh, Janie Greenleaf. Great question. Uh, there is a ombudsman from the Department of Business and Professional Regulation. Need to understand there's 26 or 27 state agencies under the executive branch. Department of Agri you have uh, Department of Business and Professional Regulation, DEO, DEP, all of these alphabet soup uh, agencies. The Department of Business and Professional Regula Regulation specifically, this is rather a unique circumstance, licensed everybody involved in this, in this space. What do I mean by that? The building manager, the building official for a city and the engineers are all licensed under the same agency. And we had a situation with Crestview in North Miami Beach, you probably saw in the news that happened early July, right after Champlain, uh, where the building was evacuated, all the residents were evacuated. There very specifically was a letter issued from a structural engineer January 11th, 2021, basically saying evacuate the building immediately because of structural and electrical issues. It's stamped from the city of North Miami Beach July 2nd. So what happened? And the sort of, you know, bittersweet uh, benefit of that is they're all under one umbrella, so it was up to that agency to basically to go and investigate. So on, on these types of issues, it took a while to get the ombudsman not to be required to live in Leon County, which is Tallahassee, which doesn't have a lot of condos. So that person is principally to be spending a lot of time, and the cities of Aventura and I know Sunny Isles Beach have opened their doors to the ombudsman to say, set up shop here and to receive a lot of the complaints, concerns, and investigation. We need to give that individual and that entity, that, that, that section, more teeth because they are observing election irregularities or some elections that don't happen or all of a sudden ballots and envelopes don't show up when it comes time for an election and there's some funny business. But I will tell you that a number of associations for years have run roughshod. I am a former prosecutor. The, the, the substance and genesis of the bills that I filed come out of the Miami-Dade Grand Jury Report of rampant you know, gift and graft and fraud that happens at associations without any type of uh, ability to, you know, to, to curb those. So we need to expand that as well. Also, everyone's heard of the Sadowski Fund that 60 plus percent of you in 1992 voted for for affordable housing. Uh, that everyone talks about how it gets rated every year, funded, rated, whatever. Also, if you live in a condo, $4 every year goes to the Department of Business and Professional Regulations Division of Condominiums to go ahead and regulate these these uh, investigations and these hearings and, and motions and, and things like that. And we also kind of continue to do it. I will tell you objectively, this has not been at the forefront. And to be fair, these are not issues that were critically important to a lot of my colleagues. Again, out of 40 state senators in a state of 21,800,000 people, I'm the only one that was in a condo. So there was no great sort of care or sensitivity about maybe taking that $4 out of that account and redirecting it somewhere else. 
And I think it's incumbent upon us, and I know I have the commitment of both sides at this point, to leave that money alone in the future, because at one time, the last time we had a town hall in Aventura, there were only 33 agents statewide for one and a half million condos. And I remember asking Enid we uh, Mayor Wiseman, how many residents live in, live in Aventura and how many police officers are there, right? Yeah, so uh, next, so on that issue, we have to start installing requirements. Uh, Representative Perez, which leads me to my next question to you. Along this line about meeting regularly and all those commitments, talk about education for uh, board members and your concerns about those. Yeah, and that's, uh, that, that's important. Um, so within the last session, uh, a separate bill from the one that, that uh, was, was being ran by, by San Senator Bradley and myself had to do with the requirement of education for those people that take part in the board or the association, those people that are going to be making the decisions. Uh, that bill during session uh, never made it across the finish line. Uh, we did uh, add it to our bill during session. So while we were going through the process of session, that bill wasn't moving. Uh, the education bill specifically wasn't moving, so we added it to, to our package. Um, but as you guys all know, our bill didn't make it through for session. During special session, the education component specific that we had, specifically the one that we had discussed during the regular session, it was not a part of our bill. And so we have made a, a commitment, uh, the four of us, to, to address this issue in the upcoming session. And it's something that, you know, without any guarantees, because it's not something that we're able to do, but I feel very confident that that is something that will be a top priority for all of us uh, in the upcoming session. And, you know, kind of off topic, but, you know, something that I think is important um, for you all to, to, to hear, you know, I think in, in today's world, everything is, is so controversial. And, and you know, I, I, you guys are, are a city, and uh, I don't live in a city. I, I live in unincorporated Miami-Dade County. Uh, but, but I think it's important for you guys to kind of see that, you know, this is something that we are working together on. Uh, we have been in the past and we will continue and we're, we're all, uh, we're, we're different parties, we're two and two. So I think, you know, I, I, only, I only say that so that you guys can, can uh, understand that we really do have your best interest. This is not a political stunt by any means. This is us trying to get results and putting everything else aside to make sure that the safety of, of your home is the most important um, aspect of the bill and, and the education component is something that we will add on in the coming sessions, but I feel, very confident that in the next session we will accomplish that. And there are a couple of other questions before I go to Senator Bradley, all related to about board of directors mismanagement issues, meetings, elections, concerns, that will absolutely be uh, tackled and addressed in the, um, uh, the incoming session uh, as well, uh, as it relates to more efficient, comprehensive reporting of issues and getting more timely responses. When you come up, up, up upon some of these issues or problems that are happening, it's usually a 48-hour, 72-hour sensitive window about an election or some sort of mismanagement or a concern about that, and then having to wait two months or three months for a response is obviously is, is not helpful whatsoever. Uh, Senator Bradley, you want to take the next one? Sure. The next question is, is there a distinction between structural integrity funds and reserve studies in the statute. And, and that is a critical distinction that is, that is new for folks who have been in the condo world with this bill. Uh, you have your traditional reserve studies, budget planning tools that allow condos and associations to plan their, their financial health. And they are recommended by professionals. They should be done. Some do them every year, every three years, hopefully every five years. I mean, those, those are the reserve studies that most people are familiar with. What this bill did um, through the work of uh, Representative Perez was to create a new type of reserve study called a structural integrity reserve study. And what that part of the bill requires is that once every 10 years, so you, we, we are hoping that you'll continue to do your regular reserve studies, but every 10 years it needs to be of this particular type. And that will require that it's not a, just a reserve study company coming it will be, it requires the input of a professional, of an architect or an engineer to be a part of that study, to look at enumerated, I think there's 10 or 11 enumerated uh, areas of the structure um, and, and step through and make sure that there is an estimated useful life um, and that there are funds there so that when that item and when that uh, part of the building needs to be replaced, uh, that the funds are there to do that. So with, there's regular reserve studies and also these structural integrity reserve studies. Very different. Representative Perez has a, has a few questions. I know he has to leave, but I just wanted him to maybe yeah, hit so I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I, I told Senator Pizzo I had to leave at, at 1.30. I have a 2 o'clock in Coral Gables, and uh, at 1.30 he gave me three questions. 
Um, so I'm gonna. All right, pick pick one. I'm gonna pick I'm gonna, one. I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and answer them all honestly. Um, uh, all right. So the, this question from Paul. It's a great question, by the way, Paul. Uh, candidate for Aventura, Moe's Bagels. Paul, uh, Paul from Moe's Bagels. Everybody knows Paul from Moe's Bagels. Yeah, yeah. It's a great, great question, by the way. Uh, would you please address windstorm insurance costs and what can be done to keep them affordable? Uh, homeowners insurance in general and everything that encompasses homeowners insurance or just insurance of properties is astronomically high in Florida. I think it's something that everyone can agree on. Uh, it's another issue similar to condominiums that comes back every single year. And we have been working on this uh, together for, 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 a, for a while. I mean, two years ago in the House, we passed House Bill 305. And the whole point of it was to decrease litigation because litigation was increasing the cost uh, of the premiums through the carriers. And we were able to accomplish that. We have lowered uh, litigation in the, in the uh, homeowner's insurance market by 22%. So some of our products are working. It just takes some time. This, uh, this past, past uh, special session, we passed an insurance reform. Uh, which we believe will reach our goal of eventually either either, either keeping um, rates where they are and stabilizing them or decreasing them over time. However, uh, the unfortunate part is that it takes time for this bill to come to fruition. And so our experts believe that it could take 12 to 18 months to start to see the upside of the recent insurance reform that we just passed. And I would hope that, that windstorm insurance would be a part of that uh, effect. Um, so that, that's that answer. And, and once I head out, I'm sure you guys can add more. But did you want to say something more? No, no, go, go. I'm just making sure you're doing everything you're, you're, oh, yeah, yeah, all right. you're on the list. That's so, all. Uh, all right, the second is, is the state setting up funds for owners to use at low interest rates when there's a large special assessment? Um, fair, fair question. Um, unfortunately, right now we are not. Uh, but, but, and this is a big but, when this bill was first constructed, the time period for a reserve fund to be funded on the structural integrity components was a year. Um, and, and we understood the potential financial burden that that would have. Um, and so through conversations and negotiations, we have extended that to three years. And so we have given you know, these associations three years to get the necessary funds for those, those specific components. So it's not for the flower bed or for the gate or for the security guard. It's for those specific components. We've given three years uh, in order for those funds to, to be recuperated. And so that, that was kind of our, our happy median. And then we're open to explore financing options and, and oh yeah yeah no that's a whole other conversation vehicles going forward for associations to explore outside of just you know having to write it absolutely a check. yeah those are and those are those are all those are all separate conversations uh, as far as the wiggle room and the creativity on how to get those funds absolutely but as of right now as far as the state putting in through like the general appropriations act for us to put money into a fund at a low interest rate that that is not that is not on the radar right now uh, and the last one is buildings of less than fifty this is Mary through Zoom hey Mary through Zoom. Uh, buildings of less than 50 units did not have to have reserves. Does this bill change to include every condo uh, and co-op? Uh, so the way that we had the way that we had written this bill was based on the amount of floors that that it had, and so three stories or more is what we will uh, is what we put into this bill, and what we'll have to agree uh, into the details of the requirements necessary in, that that was signed uh, by the governor. I understand it's actually it was it was a huge topic for us on whether you go by the amount of stories in a building or whether you go in the amount of units, because there technically could be a three story condominium with three condominiums, and there could be a two story condominium with a thousand condominiums. Um, but but for us, really the 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 Again, going back to how I started um, our conversation a little bit ago, it was about the structure of the building. And so as, as buildings get built up, you know, we wanted to make sure that, that those requirements were, were put in place. So we had decided on, uh, collectively on, on three stories or higher, regardless of the amount of units. So that, that is irrelevant to uh, the agreement of this bill and the requirements of this bill for condominiums and condominium associations. So I am going to get out of here. With that being said, um, it is a pleasure to, to see you all. I'm sorry that, that, that I am, I'm leaving. Uh, Mayor, thank you very much for having, having us. Uh, Senator Pizzo, thank you for putting this together for, for the four of us. If you guys have any questions, uh, you can get my cell phone number from any of them. I'm more than happy to talk to you guys. Yeah, you have my contact. There you go. Email me. I check it all on my phone. Uh, I'm, I'm that guy. But thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks. Thank you for being here. Okay, next question is, uh, do we have any engineers here? We have two. So one is coming also uh, off of Zoom. As a professional engineer, I have no idea how to predict the replacement costs and useful life of foundations, load-bearing walls, or floors. Who advised that this was possible? Uh, do you have a similar question or concern? I agree with the statement. Okay. So uh, would that also be sort of... 
The question is from a professional engineer that they have no idea how to predict the replacement cost and useful life of foundations, load-bearing walls, or floors, and who advised that this was even possible. So this is uh, sometimes, like we, I said in the beginning of the conversation and we started here, that sometimes we put things in place in Tallahassee that are mandates and requirements with absolutely no consideration that they're impractical or in application very difficult, if not impossible, to do. Um, we are mindful that there is uh, an incredible shortage, both of the scope of prior work or existing work that's been done and that which is being required in the future. But it's also a sec there's also sections of the bill that we're looking at. I actually personally disagree with some of the things that are listed as structural. Um, painting standing alone to me uh, is not structural unless we're talking about elastomeric situations or, or, or certain types of waterproofing. I think the distinction needs to be made. So those are the things that I, I think we're gonna uh, certainly explore in the future. And the number of conversations in the background have been about how do we empower and give a bright line rule and clarification and very simple plain reading and understanding to the engineering professional community about what the responsibilities are gonna be, what's gonna be required of them, and how they have that checklist. Because the legislature has in the past, even though some of you in here I know are far from unsophisticated, but the general idea is that when you, when you go into a condo as a purchaser, as an owner, you are giving up a lot of the benefits of living in a single family home, but also giving up a lot of the burden of doing the same by sharing those cost responsibilities. And when you, and you hand those over into the association, the presumption is that the board of, of like-minded individuals protecting their asset have a vested and fiduciary obligation to it to themselves and to their other unit owners, but generally condo owners can be considered for, for financial and operation purposes, unsophisticated in the sense that this is not the, within their within their, it's certainly within their authority, but not within their professional scope, not what they do. The buildings in my district are made up of doctors, lawyers, moms, nurses, teachers, you know, every, everybody and everything. So we owe it to, because we're making a requirement and a mandate for these buildings and the associations they're in, to be very clear with bright line rules for, for professional engineers as well. That is forthcoming. So what you have is not only what you have to do with, and we certainly don't want you to have to read between the lines and try to interpret statute that we promulgate up in Tallahassee. You have that commitment to us, um, from us, Assuredly. Um, Senator Bradley, you want to take uh, one question from Ed Coben is fully funded reserves, uh, all condos, and uh, three stories are more. Right now, as it stands, the short answer is yes. The short answer is, is absolutely yes. It's, it's going to be every condo, but the, but the focus of the bill, as it relates to reserves for, for those issues, are three stories or more. Condos and cooperatives, so not apartments. Sure. Well, let me preface this by saying I've been on the condo board for 30 years as a municipal condo. For many years, obviously, we were all talking about the condo board. But I have a different perspective now that I've been on the board for 30 years. I just want to talk about moves. I just looked up the average American moves every five years. So that means that if there are mandatory reserves, that those people that are living Correct. So if you're going to do that with all these uh, three stories, I think it should be everybody. Because that's what, what happened in ours 15 years ago, everybody would assess $10,000 for a new roof. You couldn't afford it, you could finance it for $20,000. Everybody that, that moved in after the new roofs came in and lived there for five years or eight years or ten years had to pay nothing for the roofs. However, if the reserves would have been set for everybody equally at the beginning, then that's fair. Those people that move, they get the benefit of the new roof and never have to pay. If I moved into the condo Understood. a month before, then I had to pay $10,000. So I'm of the opinion, having to been on a board for 30 years, that it really should be right. all condos. So that's a very valid opinion. And taking that into consideration and, and in that light, the, these individuals here and staff associated with the construction of this bill did so looking through a lens of requirements that run with the building, not with the individuals for the purposes of, it's the roof. And, and I made the comments very early that especially buildings in my district should be aged in dog years because of high water tables and being in close to the, I'm, I'm being serious, they should. They should, there's accelerated and exacerbated corrosion, all types of issues that, we're, that are gonna be, you know, sort of uh, released uh, shortly. Uh, so your observation is very good and it, sh it should absolutely run with the building as opposed to the individual, okay? Completely mindful of that. 
that speaks to Representative Perez when he's inflexible in his position, the House's position about reserves, is there a lot of those things. If you really delve into some of these buildings that are even in my district that got some of these reports that were not distributed to owners and they sold their units before word got out, you'd be, you'd be really disgusted. And that's sort of been the aim in my position about, you know, I think the popular sort of message that went out from a lot of law firms was Pizzo's trying to lock everybody up that sits on a condo board. Well, yeah, you know what, if you're endangering my kid's life and, and, and you're committing fraud or what I identify to be fraud, yeah, 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 I think you should. I'll be happy to do it, okay? And this is what I tell everybody ever since I was a prosecutor. A, someone acting in good faith that makes a, a, an honest mistake because they're not so sophisticated in the operation and finance of all these things has nothing to worry about. People with larceny in their heart should absolutely be afraid of me. That, that, that consistent, you know, consistently remains my position. But, you know, I see, is that Pablo? That's Pablo Langesfeld right, standing in the back there. His beautiful, gorgeous daughter, Nicole, died in Champlain Towers, okay? So when I do run into, one of the questions I'm about to answer right now is the following. So, and this is the kind of, this is a level of the commitment that I'm talking about. Here's the question. I'm not gonna name the person's name or where they live because I'm gonna make a, an offer afterwards. We had an assessment that included a structural engineer's report the president said he would give all of the owners a copy of the report. However, he refused to give the full report. Now we have an assessment of $800,000. The person's in that room that wrote this question. I'm not gonna say your name and I'm not gonna say what building you live in, but you're gonna come see Kayla right after this meeting and I'm gonna go to your building today and I'm gonna get that report distributed to every single owner and ask that board president why he didn't distribute it. That's it. That's our, that, that's our job. That's what, you know, we don't, this group doesn't like to do ribbon cuttings and big fake check presentations. We don't do that, okay? We want to improve the quality of, of people's lives. This is, this is our job. This is what you should require of, the, of your elected officials at the state level, okay? Aventura, you guys are spoiled. You have these commissioners that eat, sleep, and breathe this. Many of the 412 cities in Florida do not. Those people are, are much more concerned about that and concerned about entities and individuals who persuade people not, not to answer questions and do things like this. So this person gets a visit today. If, if you're here, uh, stick around. But your, your point is, is well taken. Hello. You must be in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have concerns about uh, the treatment of uh, applications and uh, pets in buildings, and sometimes how that process. Okay. Okay. So there, there are people on both sides of that sort of fence. There are people that. Okay. So for, for many years, you could basically go online and get a letter that says, I need an emotional support animal, an ESA animal. And you show that, and no one wanted to ask any questions because of HIPAA and all those concerns. Some buildings got a little bit more invasive, and we're, we're going so far as to ask, what's the actual medical condition? So they went a little too far in, in getting, and it's trying to find that balance, that balance there, and absolutely something that, that we will address at the legislature. We'll have a bright line. Well, ma'am, we're going to have a bright line rule on pets. We're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna have a bright. I hear you, Miriam. Miriam, I hear you. I hear you. Absolutely. So we're gonna bring it back to reserves. Um, this bill. Uh, go ahead, Senator Bradley. You can take the next one. Well, taking it back to reserves and, and, and to your point where we were talking about just aligning it with the true cost, I think what you'll see is this bill provides a three-year or two-and-a-half-year sort of guide, glide path as, as associations make that transition. But what's also happening right now is the free market is already starting to work. I mean, we are seeing uh, uh, underwriting getting tightened. Banks are starting to ask questions. Uh, what are your reserves? Has the property been inspected? Um, insurance, reinsurance, we're already starting to see the free market um, help us, uh, uh, prod us along a little on these issues. And, and so I think in tandem, as we look down the road, if we look down 10 years, I think that uh, condos, the financial health of condos will be in a much different place uh, because of this bill and because of uh, market forces uh, pushing us there, finding uh, the results and what we saw just unacceptable. You want to take the next one? Sure. How do you distinguish the difference between an engineering study and a reserve study, financial versus structural? 
And, and this goes back to the difference between the financial reserve studies uh, that have been traditionally done by condos, which, uh, which they bring in a company, but not necessarily an architect or an engineer. Um, and what's required by this bill um, is that engineering study. It's a structural integrity study, and it's done every 10 years. But again, we, we, we encourage you to continue to do your, your regular reserve studies every, every year, every three years, at least every five years. Um, but, but they're different animals, um, and the engineering reserve study is the one that was created um, as a result of this bill. Okay. And uh, Phyllis Smith. Do we have to mic everybody when they're asking a question? Is it possible for the state? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is, there's two things I want to bring up real fast, because 42 years selling real estate in these condos, I can tell you that it's so effective what you're doing. No question about it and necessary. But is it possible for the state to require that the special assessment not be paid off at the time of closing. So therefore, I asked the question about borrowing money because I have a $200,000 listing that got a $17,000 special assessment. So it's for sale, but that building does not require the special assessment to be paid off in full. Can I ask you this question? Do you guys mind if we go through like a real life, couple of real life examples to kind of but walk through these things? Because okay. Because of his roof. But Phyllis, let me ask, but let me ask you if you can give your microphone back. Okay, let me ask you. You have a $200,000 listing of a unit. That's that, correct. That has attached a $17,000 assessment. That's correct. How, when was the assessment put in place? About six months ago, five months ago. Might that be one of the reasons why they want to sell the, the, the unit for $200,000? No, 000? no, no, no. They got a divorce. No, no. Okay, all right. But <laughs> now, now, happens, and it listen, okay, happens. Now, but, but, but let, me, just, let me walk you through this. <laughs> let, let me just sort of walk you through this. And, and this, is, this is some of the market realities that will happen when you realize that you've been sort of running on empty for a very long time. The unit you have is listed for $200,000 as a $17,000 special assessment. Would that unit be priced at $220,000 or $217,000 if it didn't have it? And asking another way, is the discount built in to the sale price and the listing price on the fact that upon closing, that $17,000 needs to be satisfied? You're going to get the new elevator. You have to participate. Listen, he's giving you half, and he's not even going to enjoy it. Okay, so but if I'm doing, yeah, some but, buildings require that that special assessment be paid off at closing. Sure. And so can that be incorporated in that it, the buildings can no longer because the building's still going to get the money. Whoever lives there has to pay. It. If if I'm in the rears on an association fee for six, seven months, and I go and I sell my unit, do, do I have to make the association whole upon a transaction to sell of my unit? Half of you are nodding yes, and some of you are shaking your head no. Depends on condo docs. My, per, my, sir, my personal, my personal, my personal, Miriam, Miriam, I love you, and you can come to the office whenever you want, but just, just allow me to answer if I get on that particular question. I'm of the opinion that that's the time when the seller gets to eat and so for the association, and they should be made whole because someone has enjoyed, to his point, someone has en enjoyed some bit of living in their lifestyle, whatever, without having paid and without having met their obligations, it should, it should be satisfied at closing. Your point about negotiations is, I just bought another condo in Sunny Isles, and part of the negotiation was, you know, they represented everything was fine. I said, listen, this is the asking price, but I want a discount on the fact that this has to be repaired, this has to be replaced, and this has to be done. It's really no different, but to the gentleman's point, which is excellent, which is someone enjoyed the benefit of running between two bookended windows of no responsibility to no responsibility, and when, the, and when time's up and the $17,000 has to be paid, they want to sell. Because many people might not have the $17,000 on hand or be able to borrow it, and the only asset and th thing that they have that's, that they can sell is the actual unit itself, and it puts them in that, that situation. We don't want that to run rampant and be the case. Do you follow what I'm saying? So I have a personal opinion about that. I just don't know if you want the legislature from Tallahassee to be intervening in all of those negotiations, which basically demonstrates your professional ability to meet the match the parties between buyer and seller. The requirement for the building is what I was saying. It's just like you're saying now that the engineer, the important part of 
them requiring the engineer. It's not paint, and it's not you know putting a new uh, coating around the pool. But when you're going in and doing that work, you're going to bring the men in at the same time to do that, and the women to do that. And so you're not going to have a special assessment for engineering and then a special assessment for for the paint because you'll never get it. Understood. And so you don't want to live in a building that is structurally bored. Thank God my kids will be safe. But every time I walk through the lobby, this carpet is so stained I can't enjoy my apartment. So it, you know what? You're right. It's cosmetic, but it may be a necessity. So if I can, just to, to sort of summarize. These, Miriam, please. These conversations are, are, were had at length okay. into the late hours of the night and early mornings in Tallahassee, okay? okay. For, the, for the very simple following reason, is it looks sexier to spruce up the lobby, make the common areas look great. Meanwhile, the arteries, the organs of the building, okay, are, are absolutely failing. And I would say the same about the majority of Miami-Dade's uh, sanitary infrastructure that we have some gorgeous, beautiful buildings and lovely streetscapes and we're a world-class destination, but we flush our toilets largely into 65-year-old clay broken pipes that need pump stations that fail and leak raw sewage into the Biscayne Bay and have fish kills. I'm with you. Topically, we look great. That's generally been the concern and the most immediate way to get some sort of return on relationships uh, as board members in buildings, but that doesn't speak to the tough love measures, which are actually the organs of the building and of concern. And I don't care what color the building is, I don't care what, you know, what the situation is, whatever. Some of those discounts are cosmetic. What the legislature is saying is everybody needs to pay attention and you're now responsible for life safety. And the color, the pattern, the landscaping has nothing to do with whether or not your family and my family are safe in a building. That's our concern. The rest of it, you guys can all work out. That's it, that's it. Uh, I have a question. I'm not going to name the city, but I'm the staff engineer with the city of blank. Uh, all reports, uh, ordinance made after Champlain get posted in the city website. Oh, you know what? I am going to say, because this is a bit of, this is a bit of a deserved braggadocio. I'm the staff engineer with the city of Aventura. All reports, ordinance made after Champlain get posted to the city website. All reports get reviewed by me. Let me uh, know the building and I might have the report. So, okay. So here's another, and this is why... If you live in Aventura, you're blessed. Um, oh, and same thing with, with same and same thing with, with Sunny Isles. I have to say, this is what I told 18 cameras and microphones on my face in Tallahassee when this was about to pass. None of what we did in Tallahassee do you have to wait on us to do. Nothing. Nothing. And the majority of my colleagues live, live obviously in single-family detached homes, who have this sort of philosophy, and I and I understand it and I appreciate it. You can't tell your neighbor in a single family detached community that you don't like this part of their house or that part of that house, unless it's you know, violative of, of, of an ordinance. But God forbid something happens to their house, you know, you're not responsible, they're not responsible for rebuilding or staying there or doing all of these things, but we put these requirements on multifamily, on, on condo buildings. And we don't tell single family homeowners how much they have to have in a savings account for a rainy day. In fact, they wouldn't, they wouldn't even hear, begin a conversation Senator Bradley lives in a single family home. I can tell you that even though she's put 1,800 hours into this bill, she would not accept me filing a bill that said Senator Bradley's required to set aside 5% of the replacement value of her house and she can't touch it and it has to remain there. And that's a No, this is my home. This is my property. I, I, I get to decide the highest and best use and the enjoyment I want with my property. That's the th philosophy I've had to try to unpeel and unpackage and educate my colleagues on in Tallahassee. When do you get to that point? For very long, it's been 150 units or $50,000 in association fees or more. Champlain was 136 units. My bill over the past few years was that everything, all of these records, should have a stinging little painful one single day of scanning everything and putting everything up on a website so everybody can see it's fully transparent. No more of the 10-day wait, the whole, here the files are over here, or here's the key, you only have one hour. Put everything up. Drop trow and put everything up. No, I'm serious. Okay? Because then you get to work backwards and say, if it's not up, it's presumptively missing, hidden, or lost. And that exposes that stuff. But just, you have to be mindful of the mentality that's been around since 1868 in the legislature who all live in single family homes who don't want you saying a word about how they live, where they live, and what they do with their money. This is different. 
And it took the, the loss of 98 precious souls for everybody to understand the state does have a compelling interest to make sure people are safe. It took that long. And here we are. For most of you, this is the most tragic I told you so that you've ever seen. Because these aren't brand new issues of June 24th of last year on. They pre-exist. So this is, this is a, an example of best practices that Aventura, Aventura is doing already that may make, be the model and something that I know Senator Bradley is making a note that going forward, every city is going to be required to do that. Because I can tell you from Crestview, there's still a he said, she said that the engineer issued a letter saying get out. The building official said, I didn't get it till July 2nd, seven months later. The building manager is nowhere to be found, but they're all under the same agency. So my simple question is, who's responsible and who's getting notified and how do we prevent this from in the future? And I said this to you when we were on the floor, to make sure that the city is on and has a tickler file. Here, here's a basic simple question, because most of you are familiar with, with whether it's Crestview or another building. After a structural engineer issues a report that says, get out, like get out now, you think maybe he should have like swung by the building a week later to see if the lights were still on at nighttime, which, which would have meant, as a professional engineer, which would have meant that no one listened or maybe the owners weren't told that they were supposed to evacuate the building. But I believe if you put in bold face, cap, capped, all capped, get out, evacuate, there needs to be some mechanism, whether it's a city, building official, whatever it is, to come back and check and make sure that everybody actually did comply with the evacuation order. That never happened. That's inexcusable. Absolutely inexcusable. Sir. So basically, after the order, got any and all reports that get to the building official and or myself, after... As soon as I get it, it gets posted on the city website. All right. Okay. As soon as it reaches my hands, it gets posted on the city website in the document center, and you can find it. If it's a commercial property, you can find it under the folio number. But if it's a residential property, I put it under the, the name of the residential property. Okay. How many, do you know how many condo buildings you have in the city of Aventura? Uh, off the top of my head, no, not like really. Like 206? I, 206, I, can, I think? I can tell you how many building recertifications, right? That's, right. that's, that's my, big, my biggest concern at the moment. To, 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 to but, the... To the no. engineer's point, to the gentleman's point, there was well, like 1.6 million condos in Florida, 60% of which are 30 years or older, okay? And I'm gonna tell you what I've told a number of my constituents that I have to say in the, in the, in the supermarket aisle, I know Senator Book was, was with me on a, a couple of occasions where people said, am I safe, am I safe? I have a general concern about the construction materials, designs and practices from a certain section of time. I do. The cocaine cowboy days of Miami, those, those, those are my concerns. And as a child, we spent summers with my grandparents in Cocoa Beach. And we still own the same, 40, for 42 years, the same condo in Cocoa Beach. But right up the street on North Atlantic Avenue was Harbor Cay. And on March 27th, 1981, a five-story condo was under construction and collapsed, killing 11 and injuring 23 workers. And it was the first sort of like NIST-style report that came out several months later talking about designs, materials, and best practices. And it spoke about only having eight-inch concrete slabs and four and a half inch plastic spacers. That was built at the exact same time as Champlain Towers, okay? I have a concern for buildings, generally speaking, it, that people should be aware and attentive. Now, I also say in the same breath that my grandma, that Grandma Pizzo's house was built 100 years ago and will be here 100 years after I'm dead. It's just different, right? But there was a time and there was a place when there were some, some concerns. Some of the build, most of the buildings that are built today are built post-Andrew, post different Florida Building Commission and, and, and building code and all that stuff are not the concern. You might have leaks, you might have shoddy construction, you know, different things, but structurally just a different type of error and situation. I, but I, as a, as a, as a dad, as re, with relatives in these places, you know, have a concern to be sure to look at things built from the mid 70s through the late 80s, that's it. I mean, that, that's my position. But I have to say this, and this is a tough love measure. Also sort of complicit with making sure that fees and costs stayed low is if you get a hold of some of the insurance policies from some of the condo buildings in my district, they exclude everything except a particular meteor hitting on the third Tuesday of an odd month. I'm not kidding. And if you continue to increase and add on exclusions, the less propensity for any type of pay payout or payment, you can keep it artificially low because the agent wants the premium to be renewed. And we all know from reading and understanding 
that even the Florida statute 718 triple one, I think it's subsection nine or 11 F requires that an association reappraise their building every 36 months for purposes of, of, of replacement insurance. Champlain had $31 million in insurance under that, under that silo. When one of the last expensive units sold for $2,880,000 and there's 136 units. It's shameful. But shame on us, the legislature, for not having the teeth. So with one of the 136 unit owners called us up and called our office and said, listen, I don't want you to use my name. I, don't want, I just need you to take a look at our insurance policy because I can tell you it's nowhere near where the, where the value of the building is at all that we should be able to promptly say, you're not in compliance. Show us a copy. Let me see the declaration page. What's the actual amount? I can look at a simple comp and see what things are being sold for. If it's a building in like Sunny Isles, it's really easy. You have like four basic lines. They're selling for $903 a square foot. Probably price value is probably uh, 625. I multiply that times the number of buildings. I look at the declarations page and I say, you guys are at least 40% underinsured. More, more specifically, you're not compliant with Florida Statute 718.111. We should be able to promptly be able to kick those out. Um, and, and those are issues that you guys don't want to get involved in. Here's what I want to, here's what I want to prevent. I want to prevent your moms and dads who are living in a condo from having to go to the board and get just humiliated or yelled at or set aside or made to feel uncomfortable because it's subject matter they don't understand. We should be able to automate and make more efficient a lot of these processes. We absolutely should be able to do. And I know that the bulk of the complaints that we get in our office over the last four years have been access to records. It's been access to records. That's been the bulk of it. And, they can, and it continues to be. It's, I have 10 days, they're not available, they're not around, I'm not allowed to bring my, my son, my lawyer, whatever. And I wanna obviate all of that, the, all of those issues by making all of this information available. You can book a flight, check your checking account, pay your Amex bill, and all of these things online and by your phone. You should be able to do that for your home as well. Next question. All right, what is being done to expedite permits? We've been told that if a building is not up to code, it won't receive insurance, bank loans, et cetera. However, if permits are delayed, the association does not have enough time, what will happen to the building then? And, and so one of the things the bill did was give power to the BCC, to the Board of County Commissioners, uh, to put in place some of the timelines on how to handle the repairs. Uh, recognizing that there could be delays, that there could be, uh, you know, that, that, that these issues could come up, we could have some speed bumps. But it, what it does require as a backstop is that after, after 365 days, if the repairs have not been made, it requires a local building official to come out and make sure that the building is safe. Jen, I'm sorry, Lori, before you leave, Lori, that's Lori Flink, if you can raise your hand. The reason why I draw your attention to Lori, Lori works for Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. And it's important to mention that uh, Congressman Debbie Wasserman Schultz's office actually introduced the Safer Condominium Act uh, at the national level, which is a low interest loan program through HUD for rehab of condo buildings. And it certainly needs some grassroots efforts and help and support from, from constituents as well. So I just wanted to make, uh, mention at the federal level that they're seeking actually low interest loans for these renovation projects for condos. Thank you for being here, Lori. Thank you. As you were. Yes, so, so the backstop is that after 365 days, the, if the repairs aren't done, the local building official will come back to the building and must make the determination that it's safe for people to, to remain there. So if there are delays uh, and those time limits can be set by the board, uh, that we, we can be, be assured that the building is still safe for people to continue living in while we wait for the repairs to be completed. Okay. Uh, are three-story townhome style condos included in needing all, okay. What we don't want to be on a bill like this is a little pregnant. So if it's a condo per se under, and, and authorized and controlled uh, under the condo statute, it falls under 718 and it's three stories or more, the, the short answer is yes. Okay? If you have no association, you know, this, this legislature is not coming in to tell somebody who's a four-story something else. Uh, apartments are not included. Yes. Commissioner Friedland. In Aventura, yes. I just want to follow up with that. In Aventura, we have townhomes, sometimes they're called courtyard homes. They're two stories. In Aventura, we have townhomes or courtyard homes, and sometimes they are two stories, and they are considered condominium associations. Does that fall under the bill? I just wanted to stop you there. Sure. So 
So you have some, I don't want to say, I'll, I'll call it like multi-product kind of situations. You have places where you have a tower and then you have townhomes. You even have like cabanas and you have beach cabanas. Does that have to be inspected for, for structural integrity? It's the actual structure itself, okay? So when an engineer comes and is contracted to retain, or, you know, so on and so forth, their checklist of requirements by statute are those structures that exceed three stories or more. So you might have a situation where you have a number of the townhome waterfront style situations. Uh, one of the other commissioners lives, lives in something like that, right? In, in, inside of an association uh, where we've been to. That building itself, you all do. That building itself, okay, no, but the association, yes. But I wanna be clear, the benefit and the burden of being part of an association is you're sharing those costs. So if something has to be done over here and it's part of the association, it is a responsibility of, of everybody. You can't carve out and excise the fact that I live in this product type under this association. You follow what I'm saying? The other question that I know that comes up is about master associations, because master associations per se do not actually have a building under, underneath their purview, underneath their control. But, uh, and there, there was, and Representative Perez was commenting before we, before we took the, the dais here at the table, that there were some uh, schemes, I don't mean scheme in a nefarious sense, I just mean a, a, a plan, that when building one was done, building two, building three, that the reserves would be used on building one for its, the end of its useful life, then followed by two, then followed by three, that they're sort of pooling the assets in the reserve uh, for all of those. But the master association itself, insofar as it actually doesn't have a structure, is not gonna be the entity or the group that's, that's tasked and mandated to do it, it's on the individual basis. You can condemn building one, or something can happen with building one, and have viability in building two and three. Okay. A lot of these are continue to be about structural and all, and all yep. of that stuff. Is this bill for the entire state or just certain areas? It is statewide. Statewide. And similarly, does it uh, supersede, does the Miami-Dade uh, inspection program supersede statute? Um, no, state... It's, yes, it has to. The, the state is a floor and, and um, it, in that. Let's see, who determines the exact structural components that need correction before the extras? So, so the, the, the statute that does the structural integrity reserve study lays out the requirements. And, the, and there's been several questions about exactly what's included. So I will read them. Uh, it is the roof, load-bearing walls and other primary structural members, floor, foundation, fireproofing and fire protection systems, plumbing, electrical systems, waterproofing and exterior painting, windows, and any other item that has a deferred maintenance expense or replacement cost that exceeds 10000 and the failure to replace or maintain such item would negatively affect one of the, one of the items that I just listed. So that is, those are the components uh, that are deemed structural um, to go to the life safety of the building. The same question. Got it. What recommendation can be made in collecting the reserve requirements for a building that has no reserves and we are only given until December 2024? This is a $4.7 million project uh, building cost in approximately $63 million and a fully funded reserve contribution would put owners in a pickle, I would say at least financially, we'd be allowing a partially funded percentage. Um, do you mind if I ask you something, just a couple questions of greater particularity? How many units are in your building? 634. 634 units, okay, and what city? Aventura. In Aventura. Okay, you have absolutely no reserves whatsoever right now. 120,000 being collected annually. Okay, and there's been an announced scope of the project to, to be of reserves that are necessary at what amount total? Well, based, it's, they have a very old reserve study, and we're actually working on a new reserve study, which is going to put us in a pickle. <laughs> Let's talk about the old one. The old one called for what? I didn't even look at it. It's 2013. Okay. okay. Was it performed by... Did the, scope, did the scope of the reserve study show what was necessary and the useful life? Just and, mechanicals, like, okay. for example, elevators, pools, you know. So the, word, around the, word around the mailbox in the lobby nowadays and recently is how much is going to be necessary to fully fund reserves. What does that, that amount correct. look like? So no, what concerned. is that amount? Well, it's a $4.7 million budget at the moment. Right. Um, and we just did our insurance renewal. It went up a $1 million in premium. 
$63 million. Can I, can I, just, just, I want to just put okay. things in perspective because a okay. million dollars standing alone as a dollar amount seems like a lot. It is. It was a 100% increase. So, okay. So last year was a million. Now it's $2 million? 2.1. Okay. Did you ever take a look at the policy? That, that... I just came on board as a manager, so okay. I'm actually, I'm a... Gotcha. Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. I was given uh, about a month and a half to work on the insurance premium, and uh, that's what we, that's what the renewal came in at. Okay. 2.1. So, for a $63 million coverage on one structure, there's two structures, 22 stories each. Okay. So the association fees in your building are like, what, like $620 a month? Um, one bedrooms are about uh, five and change, and then there's, and, but, but let me take you back. In 2017, they did a special assessment. It was about $10 million. The blended, the blended average, because you said you're $4.7 million condo. Budget, yeah. Budget, right? Mm -hmm. So you're taking in a blended average of about $630, $640 at per unit. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so that gives, brings you about four and a half, four point seven million dollars. Right. Okay, adding a million dollars. Okay, adding a million dollars in insurance policy and what else? Besides, before we talk about reserves, did anything else go up? We have a cushion, but we don't want to deplete that cushion. So we're contemplating on doing a revision to our budget before the end of the year. So just for insurance alone, you're going to need another uh, fourteen hundred dollars out of each unit owner. Uh, approximately, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've done the numbers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and. Fully funded reserves would be how much? How old is the building? Oh, so here I, comes a question: If the building was built last year, is different than the building was thirty-five no, years no. old? No, no, this is a uh, 1974. Uh, Thank you. Nineteen seventy-four building, and you have one hundred and twenty thousand dollars in reserves for six hundred and thirty-four years. Sorry to say that. Yes. Here's the only thing that will make me feel better. Mm -hmm. Tell me that in the last seven, eight years, you guys spent. $15 million repairing a bunch of things, and that's why you have no money in reserves. I can't really answer that because that, I don't I want to have... Follow, I want to follow up with you because right. you may have completely depleted your reserve amount because right. you just finished a complete no. huge structural renovation of the entire No, property. we're still collecting on the special assessment. Okay, all right. So yeah. I want to follow up with you if I can. Right. But that's a perfect example of that goes from zero to 100 within 36 months. So how do you how do you tell the owners? You know they're they're gonna it's gonna be kind of doubling, maybe even triplicating in the in their maintenance fee okay. by twenty twenty four. That's my question. How do you it accommodate? Is, it, it is it is it's gonna be a large part. And remember, Senator Bradley just said, said something that I don't know if because sometimes we're. Senate for the third. Yeah, but the city allowed us because we were doing we we were doing upgrades to everything. Going to what our manager is saying. Uh, unfortunately, Hope was not our manager then. Uh, she has found a lot of things that were done incorrectly, and we're trying to correct them now. So the city did pass our 40 year search for us. Okay. Again, I want to look into what you said. Things were done incrementally, partially, whatever. I want to see sort of what that what that schedule was over time, okay. and maybe when you do a reserve study and they go in and they actually do an inspection, some of these could be several thousand dollars. I'm going to say, you know what, it's an older building on its face, but actually it's it's in really 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 good shape, um, and you, you might be pleasantly surprised, and things could be sort of more cosmetic in nature. But to be fully funded right. for those reserves for 634 units is going to be a lot of money. So that's why I mentioned that, that from, a, a nat, from a federal level, Wasserman Schultz's office, and I think Charlie Chris as well, filed a bill uh, to allow for low, low interest financing. I also want to explore that the state has a PACE program, something like that as well, that, that's available to single family homeowners to see if we can send it to condos. And I'll tell you something, I, there's a, a gentleman right here in the front row, his name is Louis Orloff. Are you from St. Pete, Tampa? Where are you from? St. Pete. From St. Pete, who came to me a couple of years ago with an idea that I think is not a terrible one. And immediately, I remember I, I reached out to Enid to talk to her husband, Steve. Uh, I wanted to sort of broach the topic and talk about it. And some other people, and it's the following. These reserve accounts don't earn any interest. They don't get any kind of return. And we're talking about 634 units, and you're putting that kind of money away for a long period of time, you know, and there's absolutely no return. That's why people are a lot really reluctant. that They lose the opportunity cost of those dollars. It's kind of like when you got a mortgage, your first mortgage at least, and the bank required you to escrow property taxes. And you're like, I'm fronting all of this money, they're getting the float, right? And then they get to hold that money and then they pay it you know, when they want it, but, the, but, but I'm losing the, the ability to use that money. Reserves kind of have, a lot of people have that same mentality. I'm just throwing money into a kitty. I might not be here living here in five years, right? 
that also exacerbating that kind of issue. So Mr. Orloff came up with an idea that I actually proposed and filed a bill, and people were like, that's not a bad idea. That with proper planning, certified, certified financial advisor, the, the appropriate you know, double, triple checks to allow associations to actually invest the reserves, nothing aggressive, but just something maybe like that a teacher's pension plan would be invested in to earn some kind of maybe even low single digit, you know, high single digit return. And it's like rule of 72, over a, a serious number of years, by the time you get to a 10, 12, 13 year schedule, you may have doubled the, the principal amount of the reserves in, in the account without actually putting anything in. And you know, that's, that's one kind of instrument or idea of, of, of lessening you know, what, what everyone's considering to be doom and gloom and the apocalypse coming. Yeah, yes, Miriam. Yes. Okay. Any other questions outside of the reserve issue, which obviously I know we're going to tackle and continue and, and, and redress? Yes, Phyllis. What we really have, thank you. What you really have to recognize is that a lot of the people that own a condo bought them 20 years ago, bought them 15 years ago. And so they, they're not in the working force today. They don't have the income coming in for a lot of these requirements. So when you take that into consideration that out of 650 units, maybe only 10, 20% changed hands the last couple years. So, so that, and, that, that's a very key so Phyllis, let me just Let me tell you where I am, and I, I think I have the ear of a lot of my colleagues when I have these kind of discussions because I understand the confluence of finance and economics. And, and <laughs> Miriam, please, Miriam, please, Miriam. Miriam, hi. Okay, but it, but, it, but it segues perfectly to that. You're listing a $200,000 unit with a $17,000 special assessment. She has 634 units, only $120,000 in reserves, okay? And we're at, and this is a perfect sort of analogy and segue uh, on this particular issue, is that those who have done absolutely nothing for 20 plus years and have frozen and artificially suppressed fees and have lived so lean as far as doing anything with the building and this is going to sound, you know, rather crude, but are going to experience a tough love measure, perhaps, of having run so lean and not having such a perfectly well-kept structure. Now, I am sympathetic to those who don't have the money to come, don't have, who don't have the money to come up with it, but they have the benefit. I remember the mayor looking at me like I had four heads when I said this, when CNN or Fox asked me, Senator, why do you think this is the first time something like this has happened when Champlain happened? I said, I think the market has bailed us out from other disasters. And what I mean by that is, in Sunny Isles, if you took a snapshot 20 years ago till today, two thirds of the place has been raised and replaced with new, better build, higher, you know, I'm not saying better, I'm just saying, you know, higher, newer construction. And a lot of the infirmities that were existing and, and, and incubating inside of buildings, I don't think manifested themselves because the market and the appreciation and the and the desire to, to, to have new and, and you, know, she, you know, gleaming real estate here has replaced these buildings with higher, bigger, and better. And that, that has really saved us. I think everyone needs to appreciate that if you have a building that's 40 years old, built with eight foot ceilings, sitting next to a building that has 10 foot ceilings, that there's a premium on a square footage basis for the newer one, and perhaps a discount on the other one. Exacerbating that discount is the fact that many associations to remain popular and get reelected and have their little fiefdom did so at the expense of the safety and the fiduciary obligation of their, of their fellow owners. And that's a tough love measure, but for those years of benefit that you got for, not ha for knowing, oh, it's fixed at $500 and I'm good and grandma's fine. This is a wake up call. But again, everybody up here, regardless of political persuasion and partisanship, whatever, are more concerned about your life Okay, then the fact that, you know what, the real estate has boomed so much, the cost and replacement costs, labor costs, construction and materials costs have boomed, inflation, all that stuff. And they're going to say to themselves, I can't afford to live here. Have they put $10 extra away each month or been asked to over the course of 20 years that would have paid for everything? That's the balancing act for us. Maybe I don't get reelected, but maybe I save your life. I'm okay with that. Anybody else? Okay, uh, we do this, especially for the ones on Zoom. All of the questions, comments in the chat and everything have been kept. They're all gonna be, we're all gonna assimilate all of these things. I need to get you to Fort Lauderdale Airport. Uh, I just wanna just, I just extend it one last time. I know Representative Perez is, is Miami-based. He's gonna be the incoming speaker. It's a very important job. 
Uh, Senator Lauren Book, who many of you know, is also the incoming leader for the Democratic Caucus. But Senator Jen Bradley, I just want to just make special mention. She, she doesn't have any condos in her district. I think she's got one or two. She serves 11 counties. That's how sparsely populated her, her district is. Okay? Condos were never on her radar, never her concern. Um, Miriam, I'm going to, the last time I'm going to ask you, okay? Please. Okay. Okay. I was a disruptive one in class growing up, and so this is kind of ironic that I'm playing the, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the one saying to, to calm down. I was the one in detention. But here's what I want to tell you. Imagine Senator Jason Pizzo serving 15 cities, 64% condos. You know, the stretch of my district extends from South Beach up to Golden Beach and goes west basically to 95. That's the entire geographic extent of my district right now. Imagine hearing or reading in the, on the news or the newspaper that my big bill for the session was on farming equipment or agricultural businesses. <laughs> Sounds kind of silly, right? Those are the most important issues for her district and for her constituents. And I can tell you when she carried this with dignity and integrity, and last week when she went to the site with my son Julian and was emotional about it, you're a very special person, and when you're feeling kind of down about the polarization and the partisanship and all the crap we hear from Washington that trickles all down, even into Tallahassee, this is an example of being concerned about people and serving people. So I just want to publicly thank you. Thank you. And from an unselfish standpoint, what I mean by that is none of her constituents care about this. None. She won't get any votes from this. She won't get any donations from this. She won't get any you know, high five or pat on the back for this. This is not of concern outside of philosophical intellectual to anyone in her district. So that's why it, it's, it's, it's it, you know, completely unselfish. So Mayor Wiseman, back to you. Okay, um, I think we need to particularly, like I said before, Senator Pizzo is ours, he's family, he's there 24 seven. <laughs> Jennifer Bradley, Senator, you're now one of ours. And we so appreciate the fact that it was not your comfort zone and it wasn't the issue and it wasn't the issue for your constituents. We so appreciate that you joined forces to do what's right and long, long overdue. Nothing's perfect. Nothing's perfect. It's a beginning. They're dedicated to go back and look at certain items and restructure and fix and fix. But I will say this, Senator Pizzo has been in this battle over condos, with boards, with condo owners, the entire bailiwick for, I guess, almost six, five, six years. We've had many meetings here. We're delighted that all of you came. We're thankful for all the people that are Zooming live. Again, Senator Bradley, our deepest respect our deepest respect, and Senator Pizzo, Kayla, we couldn't have done it without you. I thank the two sponsors, Hotwire, Joe First. Um, what's your name, Garrett? <laughs> um, Capital, give me the company. Campbell, Campbell Management. And everyone else that came today. It is defining for us. It is. If I said how many of you actually live in condos, go ahead and raise your hands. Okay, yeah. All right, it's a defining moment. Stay involved. I will tell you, stay involved. You have their contact information. Don't for a minute think that your voice doesn't matter. Your voice matters more than any other voice. When they can show that they've got thousands and thousands of constituents, especially if we get a couple, couple from Senator Bradley's district to take an interest also, you can move mountains, but you, it's up to you. We can't do it by ourselves. So I thank you for coming today. Hopefully we'll have another one and we'll have better news. Thank all of you.